accessible. In the current dawn of digitization, the Indian government has a distinct vision to keep the sun shining. Under the, you know, the Digital India Initiative, the government intends to provide digital infrastructure to empower the citizens by using IT as a tool. A remarkable contribution can also be visualized with the entrepreneurs who have come forward and started to explore the opportunities in the agriculture sector. But digital technology is not a panacea. While farmers increasingly are equipped with mobile phones, they also need advice that is tailored to their needs, as well as access to agriculture inputs and markets to sell their products. So therefore, to discuss more about this important topic, this informative webinar has been designed. So before we get started, I just have a little announcement for my participants. If certificates are available for this program, participants are requested to contact the AgroVision Secretariat for the same. So please attend the complete session in order to get qualified for the e-certificate. And if you have any question during the session, please type them into the question box in the WebEx control panel. We will be answering questions at the end of the session. We don't get to your question during today's webinar. We'll be sure to follow up afterwards. So now I would like to kick things off by welcoming our AgroVision team. So we have with us Dr. C.D. Mai. He's a chairman AgroVision Advisory Committee. Mr. Ravi Bharatkar will be joining a little later. He's the president AgroVision Foundation and publisher Agro Spectrum and New Food Spectrum. And we have a most competent speakers for the webinar today. So without any delay, I would like to welcome our distinguished speakers. So we have with us today Dr. S.S. S. Ray. He is a Director, National Crop Forecast Center, Department of Agriculture, Cooperation and Farmers Welfare. Mr. Deepak Parikh, he is a CEO at Digi Agri Technologies Private Limited. Dr. Satish Patil, he is Managing Director at Green Vision Life Sciences uh, Private Limited. Mr. Yogesh Sahu, Founder, GCOM India Services Private Limited. Mr. Kruti Patra, he is a Senior Manager, Bank of Baroda. So with this, now I would like to uh, request C.D. Mai for his opening remarks. Dr. Mai. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Madam, very much. First of all, let me, are, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Let me first uh, really welcome the very competent panel that AgroVision Foundation could uh, really gather together today for the webinar on uh, digitization. Um, I am basically an agricultural scientist. If I just go back, what is the little history of agriculture? You'll find that uh, the, the it is it is started with disruptive technology. And what is disruptive technology? Actually, the technology which comes new after innovation, it displaces it displaces the old one. Like for example, the car replaced, or maybe tractors are replacing the other thing. So these disruptive technologies are now uh, taking a lot of shape. So for example. In this uh, 20th century, if I say what innovations that have been made to really disrupt the technology, one is I call it mechanization. The second I call is fertilizer. The third is pesticide. And the fourth is genetics in the seed. Probably you all know that uh, these, uh, 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 these technologies have really been uh, in the modern uh, uh, food, uh, feed, and fiber system has changed the entire agriculture today. That's why what we say that the first wave, which is almost now complete, is was what called is that a GR technology or a green revolution technology. The second wave is now biotechnology. It started with 1996 and now also because there are series of innovations there, now it is coming to end. But the third wave of agriculture is the wave of digital technology. And now knowledge intensive agriculture is very, very important. That's why I say that you have now uh, precision farming, to what we call it as automated steering. We have a system of tractors. We have data driven targeted applications of fertilizer, pesticide, field robots, drones, soil analysis, sensors, automatic uh, driving systems, and what we call that Everything entirely which is now digitized is now coming into agriculture. This is going to be a huge advance. I don't know what will be the fourth wave, but people say the fourth wave of agriculture will be that there will be food without even agriculture. Now you have seen lots of uh, things which I have seen in Singapore and other things. 
where the cultivation is done in almost inside only on water and other things so this is all going to change and this system therefore digitization which has now started revolutionizing indian agriculture i think it's going to take a longer time and i am very happy that this program today that we have organized is going to be very extremely useful for all of us and i really welcome once again on behalf of agrovision all these competent speakers for this uh, program uh, i would now hand over uh, with again uh, welcoming all of you i would like to hand over to viba to kindly yeah. continue our program with the panel and i am anxious to hear them this time thank you very much sure. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Mai, uh, for such uh, you know informative uh, opening remarks. Uh, I can open the floor with the Mr. Deepak Parikh. Mr. Parikh, uh, as we all know, that satellite imagery and spatial data are important factors in our agriculture today, in like in weather forecasting, early warning system. So, how is all that been used in agriculture? I mean, which are the prominent ones, and how is it helping the farmers? Uh, you need to unmute yourself, please. Kindly unmute, Dr. I'm, I'm so sorry for that. Yeah, so thanks a lot for, first of all, inviting me to be part of this esteemed panel and uh, very pertinent question because uh, fortunately, unfortunately, when we talk about smart agriculture, right, the romance is more than the fact, right? So we start believing that all the beautiful technologies are going to just suddenly overnight change agriculture. Uh, I've been practitioner of digital technology for past 20 years, right? You know, from, from banking to financial sector, uh, telecommunication, and now in agriculture. So diehard technocrat, I always believe that technology can solve all the problems which humanity can pose. Uh, but my experience in agriculture is that it is needs far more patience, just like farmer, right, to use the right technology to solve the basically inherent problems with agriculture. So now coming to the question about like, you know, how the remote sensing technologies, whether it is through drones, whether through satellite, are able to solve the problem of the farmer. For that, we have to understand that technology gives you a tool. But end of the day, it's very, very important that technology is merged with the business models. Uh, unfortunately, what has happened is that uh, some of the technology we are talking about are pretty costly. So when we talk about like, you know, high resolution image up to 30 centimeters using satellite, it's a pretty costly technology. Second thing is that uh, satellite uh, gives you an image, but now you have to actually do the ground to thing to found that what a pixel, an image from a satellite or a drone is actually on ground. And that ground truthing is a pretty, pretty costly affair because like, you know, somebody has to be have foots on the ground and validate the data that actually whatever the satellite is saying, what does that mean on ground? And based on that validation, you come out with a lot of simulation and based on that simulation, you come with a lot of prediction as well as forecast. Uh, now, the challenge is that actually like, you know, while we have these technologies, which has been used defense very, very robustly till for, for past three decades in agriculture, like, you know, it is still, I'm saying a moving currency. Uh, I'll just give you an example. Very recently, I came across an image which was telling that on the ground, there is a high vegetative index and the rice is growing. Now, when I put people on the ground and found out, actually, these were not rice, actually, it was wheat. Now, the challenge here is that uh, when you use such technologies, uh, number of varieties of crop, you now modeling those crop with those pixels and identifying the crop on the ground, that is still, again, a, a science which is evolving. It does not evolve completely. So using satellite image to exactly identify the crop, and then based on that crop, what vegetative index tells whether the crop is good or bad, it is still, I'm saying that it's evolving and it's a costly technology as of now. So while we have been able to solve this problem of like, you know, scaling up using imagery, using satellites to solve actually what's happening on the ground has happened, but still I'm saying that it is uh, not very, very largely scaled up across majority of India. Uh, second problem with, uh, I'll say that, uh, uh, using remote sensing solution is that uh, uh, when you use it, like, you know, it is still like, you know, who owns that data? That's become a big problem. And because of uh, the infrastructure required for such technology, generally is owned by the government or very large private sectors. Those type of data is not easily accessible for the startup like us, or we have to pay a pretty decent cost to access that data. And that becomes a problem because without data, you are not able to analyze much. Uh, at the same time, now coming to the, what are the positives? The positives are humongous. You can use these, these imagery to identify uh, or predict actually the best infestation. Uh, you can identify whether the crop is growing, what is the health of the crop, and based on that, you are able to provide the advisory very fast. Uh, second big benefit of such technology is that actually you are able to advise farmer how to use and what amount of input can be used and which is the most optimum input to be used. Hence, you are able to reduce the cost of farming because then the abuse of pesticides and fertilizer doesn't happen. 
but when actually you are having multiple type of data from whether about the soil to weather and then the imagery if you clump all three of it you are able to give actually a farmer a complete real time advisory about like you know what he needs to do tomorrow because so far we have been providing advice to the farmer like you know typically at the farm plan what he should be doing for a specific variety it is not customized or contextualized to him now when you club all these technologies together you are able to tell farmer what he should be doing tomorrow and that's i believe uh, is what i think is what is going to work because that makes this whole thing very very intuitive for the farmer so that would be my take on uh, using the remote sensing technologies thank you very much viba viba yes i got disconnected so thank yeah. you very much mr parik now that you are also a member of world economic forum ectech committee and uh, i would like to ask you like as compared to the rest of the world in terms of digitization where do we stand today are we better at using technology and digitization or we do we lag somewhere uh, see digital has been always uh, like you know the historic story for india we had the ceos of india adding to some of the toppers companies right but that revenue or that value doesn't come to india whether we talk about google or whether we talk about microsoft yeah. but same is same has happened with agriculture unfortunately as well so if mm -hmm. if i have to put the scale of 10 like you know if if the world would be at average of 4 india would be something around 1.5 to 2 so that is the level of digitization in indian uh, agricultural sector is uh, the largest scale project documented so far in india in digitization is close to 2 million farmers right for a country which which is like having 8 crore farmers right you know 2 million farmers that's 20 lakh farmer is like you know it is it's i won't say that it's it's can be termed as error right because error margin of 2% you'll find that actually like you know it ends up with that uh another thing is that even i was surprised because we work across uh, close to 14 countries right from southeast asia going all the way to africa and even middle east uh, and and and, and uh, southern europe uh the challenge is that actually like you know we are good in creating technologies but agriculture doesn't just need technology it needs value so when you take a technology and say to the farmer that actually hey guy i'll be i'm i'm awesome in artificial intelligence i'm having crop model mapped out and he said that i don't understand all these things right the challenge is that we are not uh, able to prioritize and put it in as terms of value for the stakeholders uh, another challenge with india is that actually like you know the the pay capacities of the farmer so even you find that countries like indonesia or philippines or thailand like you now farmer are now in, they they wonder should in past 6 or 7 years the value of digital technology and they started paying for that in india again like you know uh, it's it is for a technology company also like it's very very as a inhuman to ask farmer to spend 16 dollar per year to digitize right now 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 that's that's where somebody has to spend that 16 dollars per year right and uh, then we again circle back to what the government should do it right and we know that actually like as modi ji said actually i had opportunity of working when he was chief minister of gujarat we always say that a uh, sarkar is a sarkari that means private is more practical and and that's that's it's like you know the hen in the egg situation that uh, for digitization you need to spend money and uh, once you spend money you are getting the value but who spend that money so that is one of the reason actually you'll find that uh, because we are uh, not having digitized information of the farmers we are pretty slow in uh, in in where i can be compared to rest of the world uh world economic forum is doing a lot of activities in india now they have recently launched uh, ai for ai that is artificial intelligence for agriculture innovation that's project has started in telangana and i i feel like you know, uh globally a lot of support is coming through like you know organization like undp is ai is of the world they also started like you know understanding value of digitization and lot of projects are opening up whether it's uh, even by the world bank and ifc group they are also trying to put in money uh, to digitize farm information and definitely state and central governments are doing its own work uh, i was uh, interacting uh, very recently in one of the webinar with uh, mr vivek agrawal he is part of the government of india's agriculture department and they are trying to digitize 5 uh, crore farmers now those activities are happening but i am saying that they are happening so if you ask me future looks very very bright but currently we would be at uh, at scale of 10 1.5 when the world average is 4 europe would be at something around 7 and us would be at 9 well it's unfortunate we have a long way to go <laughs> can you hear me yeah i can hear you yeah okay okay, okay good so uh, thank you dr pa uh, mr parik for such uh, you know informative uh, you know uh, suggestions and some informative details that you have shared with us and uh, now i'll uh, move on to dr s s ray uh, dr ray since we are you know discussing digitization and your
Mission is currently working on various projects like Fasal, Chaman Kisan, Dance Project, and has also collaborated with many states, agriculture and horticulture departments. And I would like to ask you how useful these projects are for Indian agriculture and farmers. Okay, thank you. First, uh, let me thank uh, uh, you and the whole team of uh, AgroVision for organizing this webinar and having, giving me an opportunity to talk to you, uh, talk to all of you. Uh, Mr. Deepak Parekh has uh, given already a industry's point of view about satellite technology. Uh, you know, uh, India uh, is uh, very advanced in uh, satellite technology. We, uh, we, we, our, our space program. Indian space program is one of the best in top uh, uh, five countries in the world and um, and uh, four to five countries in the world. We have a com uh, completely end-to-end uh, -end space program. We use, uh, we develop satellites, we, um, we, uh, we build satellites, we make launch, we launch satellites and finally we also uh, uh, do you want i just wanted to because you have made me a presenter do you want me to make yes. a small presentation sure 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 we have given access sir in case you would like to give a presentation okay so i'll just uh, talk about um how we do we use satellite uh, in um, in remote sensing in agriculture um, i would not get into this basics because you know satellite why satellite, we use satellite because it uh, gives a large area it sees a synaptic coverage it is uh, repeatedly you can get this data are you able to see my presentation yes we can see it, sir uh, you can get inaccessible area coverage all weather day and night capability you get an image form da data so that you can get um, special information you can simultaneously observe from various resolutions various um, application various various spectral bands atmosphere uh, for land atmosphere oceans and as I mentioned, we have a very big Indian Space Research Program. It's a very end-to-end -end program. We build satellites. In uh, we build satellites. We build cameras. We launch. We uh, build rockets. We launch them, and then finally we get data in different centers. We also analyze those data. We do various applications, and we also do uh, capacity building. That is what Indian Space Research Organization is distributed. And and you not only this. Um, uh, Mr. Deepak Parekh was talking about uh, costly data, but nowadays a lot of satellite data is available free. So after the Sentinel made that data free, Sentinel 1 and 2, and uh, Landsat data free, MODIS of course is a comparatively moderate resolution. But uh, uh, with these three data free, it has been a really a boost to all activities, especially in agriculture. Large number of startup companies, large number, you will uh, you'll be happy to know that India has a lot of agri-tech companies, large number of agri-tech companies. Many of them are using satellite data from free satellite data to do agriculture applications. And we are also in at, at our center, we are involved with at least 10 to 12 agri-tech companies which do uh, research and development work for us. Uh, we, these are the kind of images we get. We can get very high resolution images. Nowadays, even 10 meter data is available free. 10 meter sentinel data is available free. Of course, Planet Lab is a costly, um, is a, is a, is a uh, prized product, which is generally three meter and claims to give everyday data. But uh, other than Planet Lab, if you have to have, if you go by 10 meter data, which is sufficient enough for a village level application, you can get it free data. We have a very good satellite called Resosa 2, which is uh, used, um, uh, which is used, uh, which has got three cameras. AIFS at 56 meter resolution, LIS 3 at 24 meter resolution, and LIS 4 at 6 meter resolution, where you can use different cameras for different applications. AIFS you can use regional level applications, LIS 3 you can use kind of district level, sub district level applications, and LIS 4 you can use for village level applications. You can see all India, how does it look like in a satellite image? You can see the crops, these are the, all these rates are crops. You can see that this is a Rabi season image, so you can see all. Uh, in the Gadget Plus, full of crops. How do you? Why do you use satellite data for agriculture? You can get, uh, you can know the uh, vegetation is whether the existence of vegetation is there. You can, and since you have, an, uh, you know the existence of vegetation, you can use some ground truth data, which uh, Mr. Deepak um, uh, is um, was mentioning. You can use ground truth data to identify the crops. You can uh, and get a crop statistics, which is used for fossil project. 
you can also get crop condition because you visited this uh, satellite data also gets reflectance in different bands so you can use that to a, for a vegetation index and uh, know about crop condition and indirectly about crop yield and also since you get a regularly satellite data you can monitor the crop using multi-date data you can know sowing harvesting pattern and you can also get a lot of other information like rainfall evapotranspiration soil moisture from satellite data so practically all these data gives a lot uh, 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 enables a large number of applications in agriculture where India has uh, excelled. India is actually in Indian space program is purely uh, driven by agriculture applications. Um, uh, and we, we do applica applications in crop production forecasting, horticulture, climate change, disaster management, water cell development, fishery forecasting, soil resources assessment, and irrigation management. But some of the major programs which you are doing is FASAL crop forecasting which we do for nine major crops and district state national level we do a program called nadams uh, for drought assessment we are the agency which gives regularly drought assessment for the country at district level the state governments did the day we uh, they declared drought they use the data and the parameters given by us for drought declaration they all, and this is indirectly helps the farmers because after they declare drought they get funding support from the from the, from the, from the central government and give compensations. Chaman is a project where you use a SS horticulture crops, we assess seven crops in 327 districts. We also do various uh, horticulture developmental planning, which is uh, indirectly involves, um, uh, supports the farmers. We also do precision farming studies. But one, one major study which you do is for crop insurance, uh, which is purely farmer oriented where you use um, uh, satellite data to check is there any area discrepancy if, if, and also if there is any ill dispute between uh, uh, the insurance company and the state government if there is any ill dispute we use technology for the uh, uh, Ill, Ill dispute resolution we use satellite satellite data for crop cutting experiment planning for yield estimation then another st uh, applications which you have done uh, this is also far more oriented where in, in the in the whole of eastern india after curry rice they don't grow a lot many things so government of india wants to grow pulses uh, or oil seeds uh, to reduce our dependence on ex uh, export so we did we do the crop suitability mapping uh, we use all types of satellite data as i mentioned from indian foreign all satellite data we use uh, we use large number of ground truth data these are the set of ground truth data we collect from the uh, using smartphones all over the country and all these are used this is a horticulture map we have to generated for banana for chili different types of satellite data use uh, citra uh, satellite data high resolution satellite data are used either indian data or international satellite data mango onion tomato we give production estimates and government of india uses this as an input for finalizing their production estimates and also this indirectly helps the farmer because this finally helps uh, the government of India for planning uh, prices, uh, so, um, export, import, and also storage facility. The, uh, we also do large amount, as I mentioned, drought assessment we do for 17 states. We do drought district and sub district level drought assessment. The other applications of satellite data and disaster management, disaster assessment, or damage assessments are uh, assessing the impact of health storms, the cyclones, the floods, and even pests and diseases. And also, uh, your satellite data is used for uh, mapping or uh, monitoring the rice residue burning, which is suggests uh, the pollution in Delhi, Punjab, Haryana rice residue burning, which suggests pollution in um, whole of this uh, northwestern India. That can be also monitored using satellite data. The a major application is in crop insurance, as I have told. Uh, we can we are doing a smart sampling that is you uh, satellite based crop cutting experiment planning crop yield estimation uh, distinct clustering for crop insurance program and also yield data quality checking all these things are done using satellite data uh, this is a typical study i was mentioning where you 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 we prior try, for six states we try to find out the rice area in kharif and the rabi crop area then finally, how much area remains fellow? And over this, we overlaid various parameters like uh, uh, um, soil moisture, 
um, the drainage network, the temperature, uh, rainfall, all these things, and find found out the uh, suitable areas where pulses can be grown. So these areas are given to the state governments, and they make targets uh, based on this. So overall, uh, satellite data in India, um, uh, set applications of satellite data has been uh, really um, five decades old and uh, has been uh, especially remote sensing use in agriculture has been five decades old and we have given high emphasis on use of satellite data for agriculture but along with satellite data there are various other advanced technologies which has uh, come into in recent past like uh, uavs drones constellation of satellites like uh, planet lab uh, wireless sensor and of network or internet of things and uh, crowdsourcing of data as i showed we do collect uh, ground truth big data analytics artificial intelligence machine learning and large number of open sources um, for data analytics like cloud based servers uh, like google earth engine or amazon web server and various open source software uh, snap qgis all these help aired a lot um, in 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 application of technology for agriculture and uh, you will be happy to know that large number of agri tech companies have come up in the country and they're doing wonderful work doing really um, um, doing really great work in employing advanced technologies in in agriculture thank you well thank you sir for sharing such a detailed presentation with us talking about the initiatives taken by your organization however there day. was Yes, very good presentation. However, there was this one question that I had asked you about the projects about the Chaman Kisan and uh, Fasal. So, uh, would you like to, you know, uh, give little more details about that? Because a lot of See, in, in, in Fasal uh, and uh, project, we do crop uh, production estimation for all major crops of the country. And you know, the, the, this, this helps in government uh, not only getting an estimate, but also planning for um, uh, minimum support prices, planning for uh, export import policy, planning for storage. So that indirectly finally helps the farmer in getting a good price. Then mm. Chaman also we do the same thing for horticulture. As you are aware, there are few crops, government of India is now uh, um, uh, categorized them as top crops, tomato, onion, potato. Their mm. prices, um, you know, the prices are so volatile. Uh, there have been um, is, is is impacting farmers and also consumers. So government uh, regularly monitors um, uh, every month. We give an uh, we have to generate an estimate for these crops. So this government uh, uh, all essential crops, the uh, top crops, the tomato, onion, potato, plus oil seed and pulses, where prices are very volatile. Government is regularly monitoring and satellite based input forms a big input for that um, for this price price forecasting and also. On the Chaman project, we do a lot of application work, a lot of uh, um, uh, like we did a work uh, for northeastern states, wherever there is a um, um, U, wherever there is a shifting cultivation, zoom land, where the farmer born uh, forest and crop uh, grow crops and later on they discard it. We and government of India wants to do horticulture expansion in that. So we identified those land using satellite data. We used uh, various parameters to do the suitability analysis of growing horticulture crops. And that that's a very, very useful work for the farmers because they can grow and get good money from horticulture crops. And uh, under Mission for Integrated Development for Horticulture, uh, they are uh, using this uh, for horticulture expansion. The Kisan project is for crop insurance, which is purely farmer oriented. We, uh, even we do yield estimates based on our yield estimates uh, whenever there is a dispute between insurance company and state government we use technology for yield estimation and based on our yield estimation uh, compensations or claims are disbursed to the farmers so uh, directly or indirectly most of these programs help the farmers Great. thank you very much sir for sharing yeah. your uh, views I mean, yes Okay, so now I'll ask uh, Mr. Kriti Patra. Uh, Mr. Patra, as we all know, the digitization has paced well in finance field. Like, you know, money transfer, bank loans, everything is done instantly nowadays. So what are your plans to develop the agri digital platform? And how do you feel farmers are responding to it? And have they, you know, adopted it well? 
Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, uh, I'll, I'll thank Agrovision Foundation for uh, uh, inviting me to this uh, panel guest. And I think uh, it's a good collection of panelists, uh, highly talented people. Uh, yeah, coming on to the uh, point that you're asking, see, Bank of Baroda is one of the uh, leading technology uh, bank in terms of agriculture. When you say uh, we ourselves has taken a step uh, in the last year, 2000, uh, September 2019 only, we have launched a, a platform, a digital agri platform named as Baroda Kisan. So what we intended is to provide a one-stop solution to, to all our Bank of Baroda customers who are farmers. So basically, a farmer will have crop advisory solutions available in it. He will have uh, different uh, input uh, buying uh, players available in his uh, in the platform, so he can decide on where to buy and what to buy. So it is basically integration of e-commerce facility uh, of the input providers. Then uh, it comes about uh, when it comes about checking the mandi prices, the commodity prices of uh, different mandis in, on different crops. He can always uh, check all those multi prices. We have also created a segment called as notifications. So time and again, whenever it is an important news in terms of agriculture, we feed them within the portal so that a farmer can uh, get access to uh, such notifications. Uh, our plan was to go beyond this uh, information services or input services and then uh, add it to the mechanization requirements. Nowadays, a lot of companies are coming with their organization model. So we want to link uh, these people of different parts in the country so that a farmer, if he want to uh, take a tractor or any equipment on a lease basis, on a rent basis, he can avail it. So as a bank, I'm not only providing loan to the farmer to uh, do the agriculture activities, I'm also providing loans for uh, farm implements or equipment buying. Then what happens is through this platform, I'm connecting both of them so a farmer himself can make use of the implement which is financed by BOB or even not financed by BOB. It should be a BOB customer. Then the plan is to go uh, beyond this and try to link the uh, harvested produce of the farmer so that he can market it to the outside world. It is always a big challenge and for a bank like us, it is always also questionable whether we can uh, get into this sort of activity. We are trying, we are exploring to find out people, uh, the upcoming startups to engage them in a way where we can provide these uh, services in the different parts of the country. So uh, when you ask me about technology platform, yes, definitely Bank of Baroda has already taken a step in the year 2019. We have launched it. We are running into pilots uh, about uh, 30,000 registered users are currently using this platform. We are trying to figure out what all new services to be added in it. We are trying to figure out about how uh, the content to be made more user friendly for farmers. Uh, we already have this weather information available in it. We have uh, vegetative uh, crop vegetative growth index that is also visible in the platform. But we are trying to make it more uh, utility based. Today, making available for all this information is one way, but the other is whether the farmer can decode this information and make use of it to his regular practices. We are trying to uh, involve more uh, advisory services uh, players so that uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, inputs can be consumed by them and a suitable advisory can be uh, put down to the farmer. Yeah, yeah, so this is our technology initiative that we have taken. Yeah, but if you ask about how banks see this uh, digitization in agriculture and all, then uh, I'll have a different set of view and I can uh, share it uh, with you. Sure, as well. sure. Well, it's good to know that 30,000 users are current using this platform. And I think right. it's like a one stop shop for all their agriculture needs. And I so like right, a holistic right. ecosystem driven platform that helps in digitizing the agronomic journey by offering right. new solutions. Well, that's a good thing. Absolutely. So thank you very much for your um, you know, views and inputs. So now I'll, I'll go to Pleasure. Mr. Yogesh Sahu. Mr. Sahu, if you can hear me. Yes, ma'am. You know, it is not clear if the platforms are in widespread use. Since you work closely with the farmers, what according to is the status of digital infrastructure available for the farming community? Like, you know, what is the reach? of the digital infrastructure, 
how many farmers are actually adopting it and what has been done to educate you know and create awareness amongst the farmers for this available infrastructure uh, first of all welcome uh, thank you agrovision for inviting me here uh, it's honor to be here among distinguished panel uh, regarding digital i am particularly a fan of digital economy where power of information flows to the people and they can make better decisions we all know that entire business world is making better decision based on the information however agriculture sector and our farmers are divided of that regarding digitization there is a lot lot needs to be done as mr uh, uh, other speakers have said one of the places where digitization, digitization is lacking is in marketing. Mm. Lot of technologies, tools have come up regarding how to get good yield, how to improve the crop. However, as much as hard work is done in the area of getting a good yield, controlling the uh, diseases, and uh, in the in case of tools and technologies same kind of effort is needed in marketing marketing is one area which can directly which directly impacts farmer and which will directly help them improve their income which is the target of entire society and the government of india lot of uh, work is happening towards uh, form to folk however still there are somewhere uh, a person is involved or an entity or a business is involved in middle which is taking care of the entire process as much as we can empower farmer to directly process directly deliver and market its product and deliver it to end consumer then that will help improve farmers income and digital economy and digital uh, technologies and platforms they help do all this far can set up the entire processing entire distribution shipping everything so that's where the digital technology will help farmers now the regarding your question regarding the penetration of digital uses it is increasing the biggest proof of that is the fairs like agrovision there are many such agriculture fairs are happening the footfall of farmers is a huge number in all these fairs so farmer is become becoming aware of various apps technologies available to them but the work done so far is very less i don't know the numbers but mr pratik said it is a 20 lakh farmers who are using the uh, digital technology out of eight crore eight crore farmers that that is the gap we all need to all everything that up government all of us so a lot needs to be done but farmers are becoming aware and they are adopting all these technologies, tools, new methods of <coughs> new methods of crop planning, protection. They need to do a lot on marketing also. So what can be done to educate and create awareness amongst farmers for that? Because now you see only, you know, a few lakhs are uh, you know working on this particular platform but there's still a long way to go so what should so, we do in order to educate and create awareness so if facebook can become popular whatsapp can become popular digital platform for farmers can become popular as long as they are adding value to them hmm. any platform that helps them get better yield better production better price they just need we just need to take them there and that awareness is needed and awareness costs a lot, lot of money. So any platform that any startup is bringing in the market or government themselves are bringing in the market. If it is a good platform, we need to do a lot of marketing, a lot of Jan Sampark that uh, awareness has to happen. Uh, that's, that's the only way. I mean, and one, one of the toughest, toughest thing that happens is behavior change behavior change is the most difficult uh, part of any business so if you are if you are trying to do anything which has already been done or which is being done in some different flavors people understand it quicker they adopt it quicker however if you are doing anything that is a complete change in behavior it takes time mm -hmm. so currently the way products are being marketed or the way 
things have been done since 100 years it has been entirely different farmer is used to taking their products to mandis local market now they need to be we need to make them aware that there are better options where, where you can connect to entire india you can connect to direct consumers and gcom india is doing its little bit in uh, uh, doing that where we have developed a platform where farmer can completely set up their online business online shop in few minutes and directly reach to buyers if they have a large volume they can reach to industrial buyers or they can even reach to end consumers mm -hmm. so a lot of startup like gcoms are needed in india to make that awareness thank you thank you very much for sharing your views uh, now uh, mr dr patel can you hear me so dr patel as we all know agri tech is a more specific category within the technology spectrum that provides assistance to the industry of agriculture but what are the limiting factors for agriculture farmer for indian farmer for uh, digitization what are your views on the same please okay uh, first of all uh, i'll just share uh, how we landed up to yeah can you hear me yes we can hear you you also have a presentation we'll give you an access yeah. to we have already given an access to you in case you want to start with the okay. presentation and then answer the question great great well, i'll go to the presentation first and then i'll come back to uh, i'll just share how how we landed up into agriculture uh, uh, digital agriculture actually ji uh, just a minute uh, i'll just share my yeah uh five years back uh, actually we are uh, bio pesticides and bio fertilizer manufacturing company uh five years back we entered into south korean market and uh, uh we met some smart agriculture guys there they wanted to use our product in their farms and that's how our digital agriculture journey started and uh, then uh, they were they were using some drones and all those things for spraying and all that and just we asked them some few questions uh, what are pesticides or fertilizer you are spraying with the drone how much uh, quantity of the active ingredient is being reached to the plant what is the quantity is being lost in the environment and we asked some questions and unfortunately they uh, they didn't had the answer and uh, we found the niche there we contacted local agriculture university and we conducted uh, a uh, project on uh, application of some active ingredients through drone and how they lost and how, how what quantity of them are absorbed in the plant we can we, we just had a research project collaborative research project with the university and learned a lot in this field so that's why digital agriculture is more of bio pesticides and bio fertilizer application and pest management for us uh, and i'll just take you through uh, some of the korean uh, korean just a minute let me change the slide i'll just i'll just take you through presentation first then then we'll go we'll be going to the uh, green houses uh why digital agriculture uh, as you know first of all it is for uh, fulfilling the hunger as you know 0.8 billion people are sleeping hung hungry till date today itself and another 2 billion are going to be added by 2050 uh second uh, need of digital agriculture second point is climate change uh, unsustainable farming practices indiscriminate use of pesticides fertilizers and all other inputs that contributed into climate change and due to all these things the uh, small farmer agrarian community is under stress due to unsustainable farming due to low yield and all that and how can how we can how we can tackle this challenge we can producing more food stuff then uh, with limited water water sources and then we can make farm, farming profitable uh just a minute yeah you can see here during 19th century we used to cultivate land with uh, uh, the physical farm implements with uh, manpower and with with uh, uh, animal power uh, then 1960 green revolution started and we started using a lot of pesticide fertilizer high yielding varieties and then in 1990 gmo revolution came and uh, we started using all genetically modified varieties and all that and 2008 we got a uh, mechanized revolution right now we have a lot of a lot of data with us we are using drones we are using sensors and all that and the future is we should compile all those things we should make the decision and let farmer have a tool in hand so that he can 
predict his productivity and he can predict his uh, yield. Then, what are the things we can do with uh, digital agriculture? Actually, I know this is quite a basic presentation from my side because I'm not a specialist in uh, electronics or computer or all that, but it is most uh, uh, from a pest and disease management person perspective. Uh, the digital agriculture will help us, digitization will help us to plan our strategies for agriculture. We can forecast, uh, we can forecast weather, we can analyze, we can, we can uh, analyze productivity, we can have idea about the fertility of the soil and all that. And it will help us for decision making, which crop we should grow. And the major role of digital agriculture, I guess, is in crop management, where you can have pest and disease identification, nutrient management, waste management, surveillance, and all that. Then we can manage the resources like manpower, human. As you know, now agriculture, we are not running it as a business, but I'm very sure that digital, digital agriculture will uh, lead us to from agriculture to uh, agri business and will able to uh, will able to control each and every aspect of agriculture right from manpower to productivity to uh, operations and all that so we can manage manpower finance supply chain optimization uh, then from uh, farm operation management and uh, Post production, we can have control over market, logistics, storage, and preservation. Coming back to nutrition, now there are a lot of uh, probes and tools are uh, being used to identify deficiencies, soil nutritional status like NPK. There are sensors; they they uh, calculate moisture content of the soil. Then, uh, according to the this data, we can use fertigation management. Then for crop management, there are a lot of scouting tools and spraying tools are being used. Uh, there are some uh, spectrophotometric devices. They just run over your farm and they will analyze uh, amount of disease present in the farm or number of pests uh, or insects present in the farm. And according to that, we can plan our spray schedules. Now, uh, in most of countries like Kenya, Korea and all that, they have their scouting teams. They go in the farm early in the morning or, or, or in the evening. Uh, they will scout the film, they will calculate disease index, they will calculate insect uh, infestation in the field and they will write on a big board uh, what to spread tomorrow. And then according to, according to that, they will make the strategy for sprays. But uh, with these drones, uh, with these sensors, uh, they automatically gives us data and then we can decide our spray schedules. And not only that, but the spray drones will particularly spray those infested areas. Now, what happened? Uh, if you find, for example, spider mite infestation in your, in your, in your farm, we spray manually and uh, sometime uh, due to lack of uh, clear idea where infestation is that, uh, we leave that patch aside and that patch acts as a contamination zone of contamination and then it contaminates again very fast whole whole farm. If you have a smart device to spray exact contaminated zones, exact contaminated patches, then uh, we can control over insects very much as compared to traditional method. Then it is just like a farm ERP, the, the enterprise resource solution we're using for businesses. If you have that much handy tool for farmers, they will able to ca calculate each and everything. Now, nobody, very few people, they calculate. Even they don't calculate their own uh, efforts, their own money, how much profit profitability they got. They can't predict their product productivity. And if these tools are available with us, Definitely, uh, definitely, uh, it will it will be a great tool for farmers. And then post production, as I told you, logistic, online marketing, and all those things will be available easily. Now, so many tools are there already there. Uh, what are the challenges? Uh, your question was already there. Uh, the challenges are uh, in India, you, we got huge unskilled manpower, and now in Western world. Digitization or mechanization, they are using to save the manpower. They are using it to curtail the manpower. But in India, this strategy will not be useful. We need to use this unskilled manpower as a tool to digitization. We can convert it and convert them into skilled and uh, semi-skilled manpower, and we can use them as a part of this digitization process. That will it, it is a you can say it is an Indianization of the technology. Uh, then we have small land holding, uh, the big machineries and 
uh, uh, the things uh, like sprayers and all those things may not be suitable for small land holding. But in South Korea also they got very small land holding, but they they got the technology that uh, that they can use their technology on a small land holding itself. So that this is not really challenge. But initially entry level challenge, it's definitely is there. Then apart from language, uh, as you know, we we uh, have plenty of languages and everybody used to communicate in their local language. But with the technology, I don't think it's too too difficult. With the technology, we can solve it uh, very well. Uh, then uh, fourth point is high cost of technology. Right now, I don't think the farmer having one acre or two acre, two acre land will be able to afford these technologies. But again, there is a solution. The cooperative societies, farmers groups, they can they can subscribe it in a group and it, it can uh, make the viable for small farmers in future. Uh, then uh, big hurdle is limited, limited internet connectivity. Uh, as you know, um, uh, Digital India mission is promoting a lot of digital things and I'm, I'm sure that very soon we'll have good connectivity in rural areas also and this hurdle will also be taken care. And then limitations of universities and government research centers. Uh, These uh, government research centers, uh, they have their own challenges uh, for research, but I'm very sure they will be able to coordinate with um, local uh, private companies. Government is also pr promoting for this PPP module, public-private uh, partnership. And on that basis, universities uh, will, uh, should co collaborate with the companies and they can promote uh, research in applied area. So these are the solutions I think uh, strategies can make uh, uh, digital agriculture viable in India. That's it from my side. Wonderful. Uh, thank you for sharing this wonderful presentation with us. And I totally agree with you when you talk about the challenges and the strategies that we need to adopt. There is so much promise in digital applications to improve farmers' livelihood. And Indian agriculture needs to be made more market-oriented through reform and existing policy. Even as government provides enabling environments for digital innovation. So, you know, the adoption of technology is also equally important. So, you know, there, uh, th there is, some, I think, the challenge lies. So we have to first educate and empower our farmers to, you know, understand, to make them understand about the use of technology and the digitization. And okay. then only, I believe, uh, whatever uh, strategies and whatever, uh, you know, uh, the products that you've shared can be utilized by them in this particular uh, uh, segment. So thank you very much. So I have another question uh, for uh, uh, Mr. Parikh. Uh, Mr. Parikh, uh, I have been, uh, uh, like people are asking, and then I believe you're also checking the questions that have been posted. So there's a digitization of agriculture to empower farmers and ensure sustainability are the focus areas of government today. And technologists like helping the government on this front. So could you please share your, uh, what is your, uh, you know, interaction with government at this? Are you interacting with government on a regular basis? How the, how the challenges can be overcome? Yes, sure. Very pertinent question. And believe me, like, you know, that's very important part. So most of the discussion you will be also participating and all the panelists here would be participating, right? Other than this discussion we are having today, we always talk about digital can, digital will. This is the possibility, right? So generally, actually, most of the time we talk about like, what is the possibility? Now let's understand actually what can happen on ground. And actually, I'll just give you a quote to example where we did the project called Smart Potato. And it's a complete value chain project from end to end, right? Identifying the variety for the farmer based on their soil type, their agroclimatical zone, their weather patterns, uh, ensuring that actually, which is the closest Monday, what are the price points there? So connecting the demand-driven agriculture to what farmer is growing, right? Until unless you are not able to solve this holistically, you'll have piecemeal solutions. And as rightly one of the panelists said, that farmer cannot afford it. Uh, until and unless I don't put money in the pocket of the farmer, really he's not going to buy any type of technology. Forget buying. He won't even use those technologies because uh, challenge is that actually they don't trust. For past 30 years, we have been telling them that with pesticide, you'll become rich. It has not happened. We said fertilizer will make you rich. It has not happened. We said that uh, the better seeds will make you rich. It doesn't happen. Uh, you'll be surprised that actually like you know, 80% of the crop grown in India, we are below average in productivity globally, right? And globally average means from great countries which are growing huge amount of uh, crops from Netherlands going to the countries which are going very low productivity zones, typically in Africa. 
and we are not even actually at the world average level. So there has been a lot of promises to the farmer and that's why they, they, they don't trust it. So until and unless we are not able to show the success cases and there where the government comes in, right? Mm. Government is also looking for success cases, right? So today, like, you know, government comes with like, you know, can I replicate something which is successful? Now, something which has worked in West, we have seen in that, like, you know, weather forecasting, we took algorithms in 70s and 80s from, from the West, and still we are finding that last 10 years, six years, we were not able to predict rightly the weather, right? Mm. In fact, 2017, uh, the farmers actually <laughs> filed a case against the <laughs> department, right? So the challenge is that we cannot just copy and paste from the West, right? We'll have to create our own success model here. And here where we have tried to engage with the government, there is there is a lot of talk, but unfortunately I've seen that for a decent type of project, it is two years actually takes from the conceptualization to the RFQs. And after RFQ, like when everything is lost in DIN, because then you'll have a lot of big consultants, a top four, top five coming in. And I, I, I had an opportunity of like advising one of the top big consulting company, and they came out with the project, which was RFQ of the government. And I said, you are creating a Google in 50 crores. That's not possible. Right? So the challenge is that actually like, you know, trying to create small micro project, we have again and again, actually, actually reached out to the government, visit them, small projects, pilot it, pilot 10,000 projects in India. We have that capacity of putting maybe like, you know, 50 lakh, 60 lakh rupees in for 10,000 projects, take success cases and implement it. But I believe like, you know, that is lacking so far. Uh, like, you know, doubling of farmer income, I believe that that was a very good gesture by the Prime Minister, but execution has been flawed. Hmm. Thank you very much. So now we have some time for taking questions from our participants. So this time we're not going to call them, but we will read the questions by them. So I have a question for Mr. Ashish Vaishnav. He says, with the focus being given on agro residue, like paddy, wheat, cotton straw, etc., based biofuels like biomethane and ethanol, how can digitization help aggregators, developers, and technology companies to plan project with accurate information? Uh, would you like to answer this, uh, Mr. Uh, Patra? I'm sorry, not Mr. Patra, Mr. Sahu? Mr. Sahu? Yeah, I was struggling to unmute. Okay, did you get my question? There's a question from one of our participants, Mr. Ashish Vaishnav. He says, with the focus being given on agro residue, like paddy, wheat, cotton straw, based biofuels like biomethane and ethanol. How can digitalization help aggregators, developer, and technology companies to plan project with accurate information? Uh, that's a very challenging question. I would admit it. I will try to answer. <laughs> yeah. So there is a lot being done. Uh, we have been incubated uh, by I am Kashipur. There is a startup. They are trying to make, uh, which is a part of uh, same uh, team in which I am, same batch. Uh, there is a startup. They are trying to do make some fuel and organic uh, pesticide. Sorry, organic uh, compost and organic uh, fertilizer from this uh, uh, leftover, any leftover from paddy rice and anything, and methanol and other other things can also be done. In fact, I attended a fair in. Indoor Agriculture College, there was a company which is trying to process some grass and uh, some of the vegetative uh, plants, particular particular species, to make fuel and all. So that is my, not my area of expertise. However, technologies are there, which are being used to uh, develop uh, fuel or any other byproduct, maybe uh, organic compost or any other thing from Farm uh, waste. So I guess I partially answered the question. However, I would okay. recommend. Yeah, I would recommend Ashish Vaishnavji to please attend few fairs where such companies are participating in the fair and displaying their products. So, so Mr. Parikh, would... yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Parikh, do you think there is some technology available to plan projects with accurate information? Yes, so actually, like, you know, it's a very pertinent question that actually uh, we, we struggle with always the residues. Yeah. See, one thing yeah. is the processing residues. You can do a lot of things, right? Whether it can be used for composting or whether it can be used for creating like, you know, bio, like, you know, uh, fuel. So those type of thing, fabricating and all that is possible. The challenge is that these equipment which process this thing, right? They are pretty capital in intensive equipments. Now, the simple digital technology that what can do is that actually Uberization of these uh, typical uh, equipments. 
So there is where the digital play is, right? If I know exactly like, you know, that a three ton of uh, rice would be produced from this specific farm, I know what will the residue which would be produced and when it would be produced. So what I can do is that the same machinery uh, I can use at multiple locations. So uberization of such machinery is where the digital play comes very, very critical. Uh, second is that like, you know, when we talk about any energy, right, we need to have a right forecasting because like, you know, I cannot say that today I'll give you 10 liters of petrol, tomorrow I cannot give you, right, because people will be dependent on you that. So right forecasting of what would be the output of that process that can be used, uh, can be achieved using digital technology. So yes, I believe uberization, traceability, and uh, typically the, the projections and prediction is what actually digital technology can do in such scenario. The basic science will remain there, the whether you want to compost it, whether you want to make uh, uh, typically a, a energy based produced product out of that. So that can always be thought about based on the type of residue you are having. But yes, uh, digitization can help at least like, you know, making the logistic and uh, uh, uberizing the equipment. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. So Dr. Mai, I think you should answer this question. So, you know, there are people who are talking about equipment like weeders and tailors. They're asking whether digitization in, is available uh, in these machines also in equipments. Please unmute yourself. Uh, Dr. Mai, please unmute yourself. Yes. Hanji, did you Hello? get my question? Hanji, no, I was saying that there is one question from one of the participants ah. asking whether this, you know, digitization <laughs> in machines and equipments like weeders and tillers is uh, are, like is available. Yeah, is there is a partly available uh, uh, mechanization, uh, digitization there also. Not that it is uh, that easily yes, it is partly available. So maybe then maybe you can write to us and we can share uh, more information with you, Mr. Sakti. And uh, there is one last question that I'll take, and it says, how we adopt precision farming in rural areas? Who would like to answer that? Mr. Uh, Dr. Patel, would you like to answer that? Can you please repeat the question? How we adopt precision farming in rural areas? Okay. Uh, is it something that interests you related to your field of expertise? Uh, actually, uh, for rural India, uh, actually, uh, 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 from the biopesticides and biofertilizer perspective and uh, uh, digital uh, agriculture uh, exposure, uh, digital, uh, this uh, application of this digital India to the rural level, first, as I told you, uh, 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 the is, uh, hello. Can you please mute Dr. Mai? Hello. Yes, please go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Dr. Party. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, to make it happen to the uh, rural India, as I as I told you, the limitations which which I presented uh, in my presentation first is uh, uh, this technology should be available to the uh, local farmer with the small land holdings. We need to train them in a local language so that it can be taken to the farmers. Apart from that, if government takes an initiative and makes it on a subsidized level so that uh, the corporations or the grams, gram uh, panchayas and the, the small local bodies can take an initiative and take it to the farmer. Uh, apart from that, uh, even state government can take a lead like uh, there are some programs already running uh, run by Maharashtra government and Gujarat government where this space surveillance and all those things are uh, taken uh, are, are uh, calculated by the government and it is being posted each and every farmer. Maharashtra government they they are running a project since last ten years and uh, it is satellite uh, based space surveillance uh, project. Each and every agriculture officer it feeds data at farmer level. They upload it on the server. Agriculture university is analyzing the data giving back to the government and uh, uh, they are sending almost uh, more than one lakh SMS uh, in Marathi to every farmer. Uh, if state government uh, takes initiative like this uh, in uh, educating the people, making it viable to the local level, definitely it will be a step further for implementation. Apart from that, subscription of this type of thing, there are a lot of apps and a lot of technologies available in Europe and uh, Western world. Uh, 
but due to uh, their high cost and all that, it is not affordable for the farmers. And apart from that, Indianization of these technologies, uh, because as I told you, we always need a Jugaad thing to make it viable, uh, make it make it uh, profitable at, at Indian conditions. So this technology should be Indianized and and then uh, it should it should uh, made available available to the farmers. Thank you, thank you very much. So with this, I have, uh, we have more questions, but I think we will be uh, you know taking care of these questions later on and be responding to each and every uh, participant individually for questions. Uh, but in the, I would also like to thank Mr. Ram Janki Ram. He's one of the, the you know uh, participants that we have. He has shared some uh, important and very uh, informative views on um, you know agriculture to how to increase agriculture productivity so thank you for sharing your views on the chat window thank you very much and i would like to request mr ravi baratkar for his closing remarks yeah thank you Eva. uh can you hear me yes yes good sir. so well it was a, a very good uh, discussion uh, we had a wonderful panel and they could present a wonderful uh, a good overview about digitization in agriculture our next revolution, uh, particularly Mr. Deepak Parekh, uh, very good overview about uh, what exactly uh, digitization can uh, do and how it can change the farming and for the farmers, uh, various things. And as I rightly said, yes, we need to demonstrate in much better way so that it directly helps farmers. So then I think it will be the penetration of the, it will be further enhanced. Uh, also, uh, Mr. Kruti Patra, Dr. S. S. Ray, Mr. Yogesh Sahu, and uh, Dr. Satish Patil. I think all the panelists had uh, nicely presented their views, particularly uh, Dr. Satish Patil also uh, highlighted about the challenges faced by uh, Indian farmers and how this uh, digitization should be, this technology should be Indianized for our uh, uh, India so that you know it can be uh, adopted by the farmers for having the small small farm buildings. I think as you know uh, any disruption like we have we were facing this uh, COVID one and uh, so much of the lockdown. So any such things, uh, the one uh, fallout can be it helps you know for adoption of such technologies, and we have seen that how digitization can help farmers. That one simple, uh, you know, the money given by the Prime Minister, uh, the three installments have raised uh, hundreds of farmers. In so farmers, I think, are nowadays have also uh, are open for adopting it. As one of the panelists rightly said, that uh, since WhatsApp is very popular, is very popular among the uh, rural population or the farmers, now they are also using this. I think we should also leave our mindset that farmers are not keen to use the uh, digital technology. I think they are also very keen. What is needed now, as I think one of the panelists also mentioned it, that more entrepreneurs should come forward to give more solutions so that farmers can use it and get it benefited from that. The more farmers get benefited, more people, and I'm sure it's going to help uh, not only farmers, but it's going to help uh, many other uh, uh, new companies also, new entrepreneurs also, and in the chain, everybody will get benefited. The farmers will get benefited, their quality of yield, their uh, um, uh, access to the market will also be improved. The quality control will be uh, improved because they can, at a proper time, they can use do the pest control or they can identify the diseases. Similarly, they can also get the very good uh, guidance from the experts, because I think if they properly use these technologies, go and visit the farm, but then uh, maybe, you know, uh, by seeing his data, by maybe some uh, digital pictures or uh, videos, he can uh, give them the guidance. Oh. And I think this is going to come fast. I think very soon, that is, we have already seen that some projects have been implemented, some companies are doing the work, and very soon this is going to take over and we are looking forward to a new revolution wherein not only the farmers said but even other services and entrepreneurs will be benefited this uh, hope and expectation will once again thank each 
of the panelists and each of the attendees who attended today's uh, webinar on behalf of AgroVision and AgriSpectrum. And my uh, thanks to uh, our uh, Dr. C.D. Mai, also Viva, and the team of MM Active. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving your closing remarks. I would just like to announce that our next upcoming webinar is on organic farming. It is scheduled for 2nd of September at 3 o'clock. So the registration link has already been given in the chat window. So we would appreciate if you could register and join that. And if you have any questions for us regarding organic farming, so do send your questions or ask your questions from the panelists. Thank you very much.